fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, right. for humor, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured, for, for perjured persons, and if there be any other things that is contrary to sound doctrine. According to the glorious gospel of the blessed Elohim, which was committed to my trust, and I thank Yeshua HaMashiach, our Lord, who has enabled me for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Yeshua HaMashiach. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all the exceptions that Yeshua HaMashiach came into the world to save sinners, Amen. of whom I am chief. I am a chief sinner. It's understanding that you're a chief sinner. Mm -hmm. How be it for this cause I obtained mercy that in me first Jesus Yeshua HaMashiach might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, in, invisible, and only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare. Paul charged Timothy with staying in Ephesus and making sure things got done. And these letters are to encourage him. Just as Moses encouraged Joshua, just as we as young men have to be ready to take charge and lead the congregation. So the first thing that we want to establish is that we need a proper chain of command and that it is the pastor's role or the person in charge role to designate that. That's why pastor has been preaching on we need trials, we need leadership, we need things in place because you have to get these things done if we're going to move forward. Amen. Number two, a team is not comprised of just one. It's not just pastors, it's not just myself, it's not who's ever leading, it's not Marcel, it's not my wife. It's, it's all of us. So let's go to Acts verse I mean, chapter 6, 1 through 8. Because we, we have a lot, we have a lot of reading to do, guys. I'm not gonna do much talking. There's gonna be a lot of reading. Listen to what the most high is saying. Let him speak to your heart. Acts uh, chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. And this is still the intro, guys. So I feel like that's when I see it. <laughs> okay. Chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. I'm going to read those as well because I'm going to share it, but right now I'm starting off. Um, and in those days, when the number of disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of disciples unto them and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom may appoint over this, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Ghost, and Philip, and Proc, and Procius, and Nicor, and Timon, and Parmenius and Nicholas, and a proselyte of Antioch. 
whom they said before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them, and the word of God increased, and the number of the disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. Steve and Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. I'm going to go to the third. I think that's it enough. I'm going to go ahead and go to the third top, the third point in this intro before we go to the next level. But the third point that I want to set up before we really get into this message is that Pastor made a comment when he first mentioned that he wanted the tribes and that every man should be a tribe. And in my study, even though every man should lead, doesn't mean that everyone is qualified. That's right. Well, yeah. That's right. And that is a tough thing for us as people to really to really self-reflect on what we can do better. It's, uh, you know, in this walk, a lot of the time, you know, it's just like when you shoot, you used to say, you know, don't remove the beam from your brother's eye. First, get the beam out of your own eye. Yeah. Uh, in this walk, it's a lot of self-reflection. Yeah. Anytime you find yourself pointing the finger, saying someone else is to blame or this that's the wrong way about it. It's always something that you can do differently. You know, when I was in a, when I first started being in car sales, uh, oh. the, the, the typical pattern is that salesmen when they didn't sell a car, they would blame the customer. The customer did this, the customer did that something, or they blamed the they blamed they never blamed themselves. And I figured out a long time ago that more and more I took the blame, and the more and more I fine-tuned what I was doing and eliminated some of the things that was bringing up these objections, I was able to increase that closing yeah. ratio. I was able to get more done. And trust me, people are going to be crazy for the rest of their lives. Yeah. But it's not important how people treat you. It's important how you treat them. Yeah. Because we're the children of the most high. That's amen. And so I want to get into some of these qualifications. So we're going to go to back to Timothy, but we're going to go to chapter, uh, chapter 3. Yeah, that's all right. We're going to keep going. So uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3. Okay. And we're going to read... Verses 1 through 8. This is a true saying. If a man desired the office of a bishop, he desired the good work. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach, not given to wine, nor striker, nor greedy, nor filthy lucre, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous, one that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection in all gravity. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice, lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into condemnation of the devil, Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without, lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Likewise, must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy, a filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience, and let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For they that have the use of the office of a deacon will purchase to themselves a good decree. And great boldness in the faith which is in Jesus, which in Christ Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, our salvation. Amen. Amen. A tribal leader 
should be a father, a son, and a husband all in one. That's who we should elect as tribal leaders. So what I'm going to do now is a little unorthodox. I'm going to call Marcel and Brother Rome up here with me. I'd like you to sit down at the table with these extra two chairs. First, let me talk about Marcel. Marcel has gave his testimony many, 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 many times. And through his own confession, he said himself that he sat there and he counted the cost. Yeah. And risked it all for Yeshua. He not only is a father, but he's also a son. I witnessed him go out of his way, miles out of his way to help his own family that is in need. Witnessed with my own eyes. My brother Rome here, <coughs> he has stood up to his family. He has counted the cost. He has proclaimed that his house will follow Yeshua. Amen. He has gone out his way to help others, to be, uh, to be a, a vessel of the Most High. And these are the qualities that we should look for when we have our tribal leaders. You know, I talked to Pastor Roman Hart, it's like, well, you know, I understand that you want the men to lead, but it, it needs to look a certain way. You know, our older men are our counselors. They're done. They, they've raised their kids. They've already done what they needed to do. But it's up to us, us producers, to take charge and lead the way. We are the people that people count on. And so that's why I invited you guys up here, because there are six chapters that we must read together. Each of us has two. And the Most High is going to speak to us, and we're going to talk about these chapters together. Just between us three in front of the whole congregation, because there are some things that the Most High is going to expect from us if we're going to be tribal leaders. And uh, that's just what we're going to do. So it's a little unorthodox. It's what the Most High gave me. He didn't give me a script. I don't have any sermon up here. I just have chapters. <laughs> so uh, I will start off, and we're going to go into Joshua. Let's go to Joshua chapter 22, people. Now, today, we will establish the first three tribes. Well, actually, pastor is the first tribe. He's Judah, so this will be the next three tribes of this church. And if at any point does, you do not agree with what the word says, you're more than welcome to sit, to sit down from the table. You're more than welcome to not take on this responsibility because what the Most High is going to say to us is heavy. And there's a responsibility that goes along with it. Actually, the first chapter, well, the first chapter is about the qualities of a leader. The second chapter, Mark 6, is going to be about the duties. And Ephesians 5 is going to be about responsibility. But we're going to stop there and, and handle those three chapters first, and then we're going to continue after that. So uh, we'll go to Joshua. Oh, also, if you guys have anything you would like to say or if there's something you want to comment on, please feel free because there's no script today. It's only the Ruach. So if you see something and the Ruach is moving your lives, please speak. So I told my wife when I was studying that we would do this like we do tour portions in the house, kind of a little open forum just between us three guys. So I'm going to read the title of what chapter 22 says. And it says, Joshua challenges the Eastern tribes. So this is a challenge from the Most High to 
us tribes. So chapter 22. Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half tribe of Manasseh and said unto them, Ye have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, has commanded you, and you have obeyed my voice in all that I commanded you. Ye have not left your brethren these many days until this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. And now the Lord your God hath given rest unto your brethren. He has promised them, therefore, now return ye and give you unto your tents and unto the land of your possession, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you on the other side, Jordan. But take diligent heed to the commandment and the law which Moses, the servant of the Lord, charged you to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them and sent them away. And they went into their tents. Now to the one half of the tribe of Manasseh, Moses had given possession in Bashan, but unto the other half thereof, he gave Joshua among his brethren on this side, Jordan, westward. And when Joshua sent them away also into their tents, he blessed them. And he spake unto them, saying, Return with much riches unto your tents, and with very much cattle, with silver, with gold, and with brass, and with iron, and with very much raiment. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brethren. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go into the country of Sinai, whereof they were possessed, according to the word of the Lord, which by the hand of Moses. And then they came to the borders of Jordan that are in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh, built there an altar by Jordan, a great altar to see. And the children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh have built an altar over against the land of Canaan, in the border of Jordan, at the passage of the children of Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, the whole congregation of, of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go to war against them. And the children of Israel sent unto them of sent unto the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the half tribe of Manasseh and to the land of Gilead, Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and with him ten princes of each tribe, uh, with, with him ten princes of each tribe of each chief house, a prince throughout all the tribes of Israel. And each one was a head of the house of their fathers among the thousands of Israel. And they came to the children of Israel and to the children of Gad and to the half tribe of Manasseh and unto the land of Gilead. And they spake with them, saying, Thus saith the whole congregation of the Lord, What trespass is this that ye have committed against the Lord God, between the God of Israel, to turn away this day from following the Lord? And that ye have builded you an altar that ye might rebel this day against the Lord. Is the iniquity of pure too little for us, from which we are not yet, from which we are not cleansed until this day, although there was a plague in the congregation of the Lord? But ye must turn away this day from following the Lord, and it wait, sorry again, 18. But that ye must turn away this day from following the Lord. And it will be, and it will be, seeing ye rebel to this, rebel today against the Lord, that tomorrow he will be wroth with the whole congregation of Israel. Notwithstanding, if the land of your possession be unclean, then pass ye over unto the land of the possession of the Lord, where the Lord's tabernacle dwelleth, and take possession among us. But rebel not against the Lord, nor rebel against us. In building you an altar besides the altar of the Lord our God. Did not Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass in the accursed thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel? And that and that man perished not alone in his iniquity. Then the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half tribe of Manasseh answered and said unto the heads of the thousands of Israel. And the Lord God 
the Lord God of gods, the Lord, the Lord God of gods, he knoweth, and Israel shall know if it be in rebellion or if in transgression against the Lord. Save us not this day. That we have built us an altar to turn from following the Lord or if to offer burnt offerings or meat offerings or if to offer peace offerings thereon. Let the Lord himself require it. And if we have not rather done it for fear of this thing, saying in time to come, your children might speak unto our children, saying, what have we to do with what ye, what have ye to do with the Lord God of Israel? For the Lord hath made Jordan a border between us and you, and ye children of Reuben and children of Gad, ye have no part in the Lord. So shall your children make our children cease from, father, from fearing the Lord. Therefore we said, let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offerings, nor for sacrifice, but that it may be a witness between us and you, and our generations after us, that we might do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings and with our sacrifices and with our peace offerings, that your children may not say to our children in time to come, ye have no part in the Lord. Therefore, we say it shall be when they should say to us, to our generations in time to come, that we may say again, behold, the pattern of the altar of the Lord which our fathers made not for burnt offerings, nor for the sacrifices, but it is a witness between us and you. God forbid that we should rebel against the Lord and turn this day from following the Lord, to build an altar for burnt offerings, for meat offerings, or for sacrifices besides the altar of the Lord our God that is before his tabernacle. And when Phinehas, the son, the priest, and the princes of the congregation and the heads of thousands of Israel, which were with him, heard the words that the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the children of Manasseh spake, it pleased them. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, said unto the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the children of Manasseh, This day we perceive that the Lord is among us, because ye have not committed this trespass against the Lord. Now ye have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. And Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and the princes returned from the children of Reuben, from the children of Gad, and out of the land of Gideon, unto the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought them word again. And this thing pleased the children of Israel, and the children of Israel blessed God, and did not intend to go against them in battle, and to destroy the land wherein the children of Reuben and Gad dwelt. And the children of Reuben and the children of Gad call the altar in, for it shall be a witness between us that the Lord is God. Amen? Yeah. One thing that is paramount that we understand that I got from this, and this is not taking notes beforehand, is that if we see something wrong in the camp, we have to be ready to go to war. Four. Pastor is not here today, and you know we have to take charge. You know, we know what needs to be done. We know what things need to do. But we have to do it. Amen. And, be yeah. willing, and be willing to fight for it. Amen. You know, it reminds me of when in Judges when uh, Deborah stood up. She said there wasn't a spirit found among 40,000. And that's why and it's referring back to Paul because I've been studying all over. I'm not going to go to these chapters. These are just, just quick topics. That's why Paul said it's a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Not that she can't. But if you have men sitting in the congregation and they're not willing to speak up, that's a shame. Hallelujah. And the ratio in here is pretty solid. In most churches, there's a bunch of women. They have to leave. But that's not the case here. And so... What I got from Joshua 22 is the qualities is that we have to be ready to not only go to war, but to talk to the people that we are heads over and to the people that we are accountable for and to each other and to make sure that we are going in the right direction. Pastor already said a few weeks ago that you know we're going to simplify this thing. He's not going to bring everything to the congregation. He's going to have three or four or five that he can talk to that's going to get things done. And that's really us. You know, I've been thinking a lot about the structure of this uh, this congregation. And as 
as the head of my tribe, my wife, she runs special events. Sister Shirley has decided she wanted to be a Levite. She does benevolence. I have the garden. If those three things fail, it's not their fault. It's mine. It's my job to assist them in whatever way that I can. They run it. But if I see something that's wrong, it's my job to correct it. And that's what I'm charging us today is that we see something. Let's, put on the, let's, let's meet up at Shiloh and let's go talk about it. Let's go get it done. That's what we're to do. And not to ask questions about it. We, just like when we went to uh, last Shabbat, we read God's kingdom of restoration. He said, lions roar. Glory. The, enemies, the enemies go out. The enemy goes out like a roaring lion, but we're the actual lions. Yeah. And for too long, have we been caught. And so that's to start it off because, like I said, if this gets a little too heavy for us, you're more than welcome to sit back down. But this is what Yah is going to require from us going forward because there are more levels than this. We already do the feast. And we already preach solid teaching. Pastor is on fire. I talk yeah. about I talk about my tuning fork. You know, and, uh, I ain't told Pastor this, but he watching probably, so he gonna hear. I don't study what Pastor studies, even though he asked me to. I'm not going to do it. And the reason why is because if I look to my right, and he's looking to the left, and the Most High is still reading the same message, I know we're on the same page. And so I have to trust that Yah is leading me, not Pastor. I listen to Pastor and I respect Pastor. I follow what his teachings say, but I have to get it for myself too. And that's our charge as well, as well, as leaders in this community. That we go directly to the Father as well. So when Pastor brings up something, you're like, you know what? I was just praying to y'all about that. Amen. Amen. It's not a coincidence. Amen. Our God is El Khan, He is one. That's right. Yeah. One spirit ball. So uh Marcel, I have you marked down for Mark chapter 6. So keep your eyes and ears open. It's all for you, baby. Oh, in, in, you guys have any comments on that? That's what I had. I'm sorry. You know, I think it is important for us to tell you our own things just for the fact that. Um, if we're to be watchmen, we can't watch the same area to protect everything. That's right. And so, you know, we do need to, if you look left, I look right. You look in front, I look in the back, you know. Yeah. And so, if, if we all look in the same place, somebody's going to get us or something. That's right. Uh -huh. and so, um, yeah, I think it's important. So, are we all there in Mark chapter 6? Are we getting it? Now, I did like the last chapter, I will say so. My family's used to it. When we do Bible study, I will say so. Um, but in Joshua chapter 22, um, it was kind of funny to me because it, it before they actually went to war, because this is after they fought everybody, right? before they went to war, it was declared that Reuben and Gad and half of Manasseh would be on the other side of the Jordan. And it was and so they've gone the way back and so they they thought they were doing an offense against Jehovah when they built the altar. Um, but we we should have signs between us that we are together. And so sometimes we do forget we think that since you over there you're not with you. Um, so it's important that we have a sign that I, we are together, you know. It's Israel. We we are one people. It is the spirit that said makes us a God. And so sometimes there will be a sign that's needed because sometimes we think, well, that person doesn't, I'm not with that person. Well, they're not with me. Now. You're always fighting against me or you're not even the same place. But no, nah, it's, we may be on a different side of the Jordan. Um, but there should always be a sign that we are still the same people. Amen. We still serve the same God. So, um, now it's funny, even if a church was to branch off, and sometimes we think, ah, that's them over there or we're over here, but um, no, it's, it, we're the same. You know? We're together. And sometimes we forget that. Even though when we said, I plan for later for us to branch off into, uh, to go to, let's say, Beaumont. I heard him say that one time. I don't know if you mentioned it or not, but go to Beaumont. 
And so we plan it, but when time it comes to go there, some of us make our feelings hurt. Or like, well, why are you leaving? Why, why, why this? Well, that's the plan. But yet, yeah, let us put a sign today to let us know that we are one. And so Amen. that the Spirit I like that. And it is, again, we should be one, Kaya, and understand, although you may be over there, we're still the same congregation. Amen. So are we all there now? Yeah. Mark chapter 6. Amen. All right, Mark chapter 6, verse 1. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples called him. And when the seventh day was come, And when the Sabbath day come, he began to teach in the synagogues. And many hearing him were astonished, saying, For well, whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is that which is given unto him? And even such mighty works are wrought by his hands. It's okay. Well, That's why you know, can't ignore that. Yeah, I don't think he is no more. I sleep through. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> you know, if they have millions in the. In, in, in the camp, you know, at the time. So you used to be was fun. There's always, they were producing. They had a new generation, didn't they? So they were producing. So it's, you, you should hear me with that. That's a good thing. I mean, God is allowing us to be fruitful. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, again, verse 3. It's not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and um, Jose and Judah, or Judah and Simon, are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. But Yeshua said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country, and among his own kin, in his own house. And he could there do no mighty work, save that he laid the hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went around about the villages teaching. And he called unto the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two, and gave them power over unclean spirits, and commanded them that they should not take nothing for their journey, save a staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse, but be showed with sandals, and not put on two coats. And he said unto them, In what place soever ye enter into a house, there abide till you depart from that place. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear you, when you depart then, shake off the dust under your feet for a testimony against them. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than that city. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. Verse 14. And King Herod heard of them, for his name was spread abroad. And he said, that John the Baptist was risen from the dead, and therefore mighty works do show forth themselves in him. Others say this is Elias, Elijah, and others say this is that prophet, or as one of the prophets. But when Herod heard thereof, he said, It is John whom I beheaded. He is risen from the dead. For Herod himself had sent forth and laid hold upon John, and bound him in prison for Herodias, say his brother Philip's wife, for he had married her. For John had said unto Herod, It is not lawful for thee to have them for thy brother's wife. Therefore Herodias had a quarrel against him, and would have killed him, but she could not. For Herod feared John, knowing that he was was a just man and a holy, and preserved him. And when he heard him, he did many things, and heard him gladly. And when it um, and when a convenient day was come that Herod on his birthday made a supper to his lords, high captains, and chief of the state of um, Galilee, when the daughter of, of the said, or yeah, said Herodias came in and danced and pleased her with them and sat with them, the king said unto the damsel, Ask of me whatever you will, and it shall be given to me. And he swore unto her, Whatsoever you shall ask of me, I will give thee into the half of my kingdom. Yes. 
<laughs> and she went forth and said unto her mother, What shall I ask? And she said, The head of John the Baptist. And she came and straightway with haste, she came quickly unto the king and asked, saying, I will that you give me by and by in a charge of the head of John the Baptist. And the king was exceedingly sorrowful. Um, yet for his own sake and for the sakes which sat with him, he could not reject her. And immediately the king sent an executioner and commanded his head to be brought. And he went and beheaded him in the prison and brought his head in a charger and gave it to the damsel. And the damsel gave it to her mother. And when his disciples heard of it, they came and took his corpse and laid it in the tomb. And the apostle gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. And when he said unto them, this is when the disciples came back after they he sent them out. So, and he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure, leisure, a leisure so much as to eat. And so they departed to a desert place um, by ship privately. And the people saw them depart, and many knew him, and ran afoot um, closer out of all cities, and outwent them and came together unto him. And Yeshua when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep not having a shepherd. He began to teach them many things. And when that day was now far, far spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is the desert place, and now the time has far passed. Send them away that they may go into their country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. And Yeshua answered and said unto them, Give them something to eat. And they said to him, shall we go and buy 200 penny worth of bread and give them to eat? And Yeshua said unto them, how many loaves do you have? Go and see. And they, and when they knew, they said, five and two fish. And he commanded them to make them all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up into heaven and blessed and break the loaves and gave them to the disciples and set before them the two fishes divided he among them all. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments and of the fishes. And they did eat of the loaves of about five thousand men. And straightway, verse 45, and straightway he constrained his disciples to get into the ship and go to the other side before unto Bathsheba where he sent away the people. But when he had sent them away, he departed to a mountain to pray. And when even was come, when evening was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. And he saw them toiling and rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And about the fourth watch of the night he comes unto them, walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. But when they saw him walking by the, upon the sea, they supposed that he would have been a spirit and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them and said unto them, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And went up unto the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore, sore amazed in themselves beyond measure and wonder. For, the, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for the heart was hardened. 53. And when they had passed over, they came into the land of Gesenarite and drew to the shore. And when they were come out of the ship, straightway they knew him. And they ran through the whole region about and began to carry about and bed those who were sick where they heard he was. And whether he should go to the cities or to the villages or country, they laid the sick in the streets and besought him that they might touch. Okay. And beside him that they might touch if it were but the border of his garments or diseases, and as many as touched him were made whole. Okay, so the first thing that stood out to me was was Yeshua being rejected in his own hometown. And the uh, pastor preached a message about this a little while ago. It was called the message of familiarity. And 
our family and our closest friends is, is going to be our our biggest battles. These are the people, um, you know, that we love and want to bring to the truth, but because they are so familiar with us and know us, they reject us. Um, verse Matthew, Mark 6, verse 3. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary? To me, that sounds like, is this not, is this not the wrong? <laughs> you know, from, from, from Texas City. And uh, we really have to be on guard and stay prayed up and be in the word and uh, show them love because that's the only way that they will see that what we're bringing to them is the truth. Uh, the second thing is the mission for the 12 and how he sent them out two by two. And uh, as he was reading, he got to where he was talking about the two fishes and the loaves. To me, that sounded like y'all sending two, two men to the masses and the masses being fed. And at the end of it, they took up 12 baskets full of fragments. And uh, that, that kind of showed me the 12 tribes being full. You know, what we're doing here right now is the groundwork, the building for that process. And in order for us to get 12 full baskets, we're going to need to have structure in order. And also, uh, for us men, Talking about myself and Cody, not going to leave myself out. But uh, just, just to be on guard, the Bible says to guard our heart. The window to our heart is our hearts and our mind. And uh, we do need to be sober. We see here that from just one dance, this man was willing to give this woman anything up to half of his kingdom. When he knew. I wasn't even his wife. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it wasn't his wife. Like, wow. You know, what kind of uh, 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 bewitchment or trance are you under? Right. Yeah, yeah. So just, just to be on guard, because Yah has charged us to do certain things, and this man here, he, he knew who John the Baptist was. He might have held him captive, but I felt like he was charged not to, you know, to, to, to kill him or to go any further. Yeah. And the enemy, he is very crafty, very sneaky. What did he do? Sent a woman in there to dance. He said, I'll give you anything you ask for. She went back and consulted with the enemy, and the enemy said, give me the head of John the Baptist. So we just have to be on guard. Well, the first part for me was is also when Rome was saying for us not to be discouraged when we don't actually, like our friends and our family don't actually um, start believing or come out. Because um, he said in verse 4, a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own people, the king, and in his own house. And so even sometimes people around you, or even our wives, or our kids, or our mother, or, or our sisters, or brothers, won't see the vision or, or see who we are. Um, they just want to see what we used to be. You know, and I only see you as a carpenter. You know, I only see you as a person who has done this, or done that, or sometimes has done this to me. You know, um, aren't you the one that I fought back in? That's what I'm going to from. Yeah, and so you dated uh, my sister, or, or you know, and so we they just remember you, and so you want uh, for us not to be discouraged um, by those things, by because one is the spirit that leads, 
leads, so yeah. draws people. It's not us. It's not, it's not our words. And so they may not be for us to witness, to be that witness. And so he will always have somebody else to go and witness to him. So it's not for us to be, you just plant the seed, or we are in the seed. You know, or you protected the seed, or whatever it is. Um, we want to be, sometimes we get bogged down, I know it myself, to be what we want to be. I want to be the one that waters it, that plants it, that does, and I want to see it grow. Mm -hmm. And if it didn't grow, I, I didn't do my job. No, no, that's, that's not, according to the word, that's not how it always goes. And so, again, it is Yahweh who gets to increase. And not, I have one more, I can not I save that person. No, no. It's Yah's kingdom that gets the leaders. Um, not us. And that's what I got. And also to be on our guard because the enemy will always try to use things that um, that that we seek to, to have. You know, if it whatever it is, you know, for him it was lust in his eyes. I mean, or sometimes it's power, sometimes it's more money, sometimes um, those things to to try to get us to to compromise who we're supposed to be or what we're doing. Because he knew who John was. But his mind wasn't on John, or his mind wasn't on the things to protect. Or because he had, as it says here, I forget what the words he used, but he saw him and was, um, saw him do many things, and he heard him gladly, so he was happy to hear him. And sometimes we were around the wrong environment, which is where he was in the wrong environment, and allowed certain things to go on around him. And sometimes we need to be on guard what we allow to go on around us, um, as first as men, but also as just where we, wherever we are. Hey, hey, y'all can't be gossiping around me. That's you right. Know, take that over there. Bro. That's right, amen. No, 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 we're not going to be doing that. We're not going to, we ain't going to tell them to stop each other, brother. I, I know she may look good, but we ain't going to tell them to okay? Not today. Amen. You know, or whatever it is, we just have to make sure we don't our guard just to live. Because once we allow those things to be, um, to take place, they will continue to take place. And then we put it in a compromised situation where we didn't realize we were even hit. That's not even where my mind was, but it took you there. Yeah. Because yeah. you allow those yeah. things yeah. to get in the way. Yeah. So it, it's um, sometimes we want to stop going to certain things. That's right. Yeah. We want to stop, you know, watching certain things. That's right. Um, listening to certain things. Because even as I said earlier, music actually, there's a spirit behind it. That's right. And so if we don't guard ourselves even with the music that we listen to, we allow certain spirits to weave in how we even think and rationalize. So I can say, I can deal with this. Really? Mm -hmm. really. Right. You didn't last time. Yeah. And and so the enemy's still allowing us to, or, or these traps are being set. Oh, we just allow them traps. Because the word says we're taken away by our own. Right. It's the things that we want to do, actually. Because if something we want to do, it's not, a, it's not a trap. It's not, I don't even want to live that way. But something that you want to do, you know, some people just want to fight. I'm just waiting for somebody to say something wrong to me. I'm just waiting for it. I wish you would say something. Like Senator Entertainment, we have a wish. Mentality. I wish somebody would say something to me today because today is not the day to mess with me. And so sometimes we have to be on the guard with ourselves as in, you know what? It is the spirit um, that lives in me and the gift of the spirit. Love, joy, right. patience is one of them. And so long suffering. Amen. Now, I don't know if someone to hear that long suffering. Uh, but it's this yeah. yeah, it's not yeah. short suffering. Yeah. Now, I can deal with it today, you know. <laughs> but say somebody on your job and they come to you every day talking that same stuff, like, you know what? Yeah. Long suffering. That's right. Long suffering. She can come today because I have long suffering. He can keep <laughs> keep on because I have long suffering. But sometimes we want to I would say what's they sent to me today. I've been ready to fight. Right? I didn't get my check the way it didn't look right. Yeah. You know, whatever it may be. You know, sometimes it don't take much for us right. to, to fall into, um, yeah, into a snare. And so we have to be on guard. Amen. You know, and, um, and not place ourselves in that and make sure we have the right mentality. That's why it says always set our things on the things above. That's right. And so if we, we don't do that and continue to look horizontal, not that we don't, should not look horizontal. But we set our hearts and our affections, as brother says, our affections on things above. Right. These things won't move us. Glory. They won't move us. Okay, that's that's a nice dance, but okay, you can sit down. Yeah. You know, that's nice. Okay. You can sit down. Right. Next thing, you know, and so it's um, his affection was one of the things around. 
um, or how we feel, our emotions, because our emotions get the best of us. And that's what this was, lust and causing emotion, or whatever that was. But um, we just need to be on guard. So what I got from it when I was studying was a macro picture of the whole situation. I I like to watch and listen a lot of times. And Pastor was uh, talking about how uh, a lot of people in Texas City don't necessarily listen to what he has to say because they know his past. And I don't find it strange that Pastor is not here today. I also don't find it strange that JD is not here today. You know, I made the confession about you guys, but in thinking about Brother JD last year, when he talked about how Shannon brought this to his attention and that he was going back home to talk to some prominent people in his family. He's getting that opportunity to do what we did. And the most I showed me that, because I was like, okay, well, you know, who, who I'm gonna, how you want me to do this? This might hurt some people's feelings and this and that, but that's being handled. He didn't want Pastor to be here so we could struggle through today. Right. We look at each other like, who gonna do what? Amen. And everybody's waiting on us to leave. Mm -hmm. And when we get in order, what we have to get in order. And and I and I I, I know in the near future we're gonna have a fourth tribe member. And when he sends us out two by two, because he's already paired us up, he's already paired us up. Don't be surprised to see what's going to happen in this community. Because they ain't going to listen to pastors, but they don't listen to us. Amen. And so when we go to these churches and we go into these communities and we start preaching, we start prophesying these people, laying hands on people, something is going to shift. Yeah. And don't be surprised if someone heads roll. And then don't be surprised when we see those thousands out there. And when we got to feed them, we're going to go to the doctor's store and get a bunch of bread. No, we got the garden in the back. Let's right. break out what we have. We, guys are orchestrating everything in due season. I do not believe that this is for nothing. We all came from different churches in different places. We all had to go through different things, but the story is the same. And why is that? Because we are waiting for that next exodus, and that looks a certain way. They said Yeshua had compassion over the whole multitude because they had no shepherd. He is the shepherd. Yes, yes. And who's to say that pastor isn't John the Baptist? I mean, I don't know, but it's just one of those things to where on a macro scale, these are the things that Yah is moving us towards. That's why we host these feasts. That's why we put on the work. That's why the responsibility is laid on our shoulders because you, know, you have a big family. Half of your family is here, and half of my family is here. Man. And, and when I put it on paper, there's only about five to ten people who don't fit in that group already. And so it's very important that we understand from a macro scale that, that when, when we go out, because Yah is gearing us for street ministry, and, and whatever way that looks, I do not know yet. I know we're working on music. I don't know what he has in store for you. And whoever your partner is going to be, I assume I assume who it's going to be, but that's not for me to say. Okay, but we don't know what that looks like, what our jobs are going to be. But when we do, we have to expect things to shift. We have to expect the harvest because we all know there's going to be a great harvest, right. and we have to be prepared to do what needs to be done and to give what we have, even if it's a little bit. You know, the, the, the widow gave two pence, they gave they two loaves, they two fish. So we have to look at those parallels and really, um, you know, just, just be prepared for what the next level is. This, us getting the order, is us preparing for that level. And, and this is just a comment on some of our past, because I've had a chance to look back and really see what's going on in this congregation. We have made great efforts Yah's feast, his Shabbat, and keeping his commandments. That is a testimony of this congregation. We are actively seeking to restore the body of Messiah. But in that, and like I told Pastor, I first noticed it when we went to that church in Galveston, not God's kingdom restoration, but the other one that closed down, which that's another sign of itself. When you go visit a church and they don't 
take on your peace when we know we have the true peace we expect it to shut down yeah. he said take your peace back unto you so we expect those things so but we have to expect things to happen so uh I lost it. Maybe he didn't want me to say it. I don't know. We're going to go to Ephesians 5 now. And Brother Rome is going to read this one now. The Most High gave him this one because he's a newlywed. <laughs> and there's some important things that need to be said in Ephesians 5. And I, I think it's going to edify uh, this community in proper context. A lot of times scripture has been taken out of context. And me and my wife had a long talk about this because she knows how I feel about leadership in the community and also what that looks like between men and women and y'all all know karen leads with the iron fist and i allow her to but i'm also there with her in a lot of things that she do so i want i want him to read you know ephesians chapter five and we're going to talk about that next week. ephesians chapter five the title I have is Walk in Love. <laughs> Be ye therefore followers of Elohim as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to Elohim for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. Neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving thanks. For this know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater have any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ of Elohim. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of Elohim upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them for ye were sometimes, for ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in Jehovah. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving which is acceptable unto Jehovah, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he said, Awake, thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of Jehovah is, and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit or the Ruach speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to Jehovah, giving thanks all for, excuse me, giving thanks always for all things unto Elohim and the Father in the name of Jehovah, Jesus Christ. Submitting yourselves to one another in the fear of Elohim, wives, 
submit yourselves unto your husbands as unto Jehovah. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so that the wives be to their own husbands in everything, husbands love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth, but nourisheth it and cherisheth it, even as Jehovah the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. <laughs> okay, so the first thing I'd like to speak about um, the title I have for chapter 5 is Walk in Love and that's the major way that we're going to be able to get the structure and the support that we need. Because we're all our body and you know my foot's doing something wrong down on one so I don't just yell at my foot like hey you know get in line but you know out of blood of my you know a little bit kicking in the right direction. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, all, all, all inside you. But, you know, the point I'm trying to get across is, is that, you know, us being the body, when we are trying to uh, get things right in the house, in the community, um, I'm not saying we don't do it out of love, but I think maybe some people don't think that we are doing it out of love. Sometimes, you know, we can be in the flesh and uh, get rubbed the wrong way. So walking in love is just not necessarily approaching someone in love, but it's being able to be approached with love. Like don't just think that somebody is going to, you know, come at you and attack you all the time, but instantly think love. Most people think that uh, criticism is bad or consequences is bad, but consequences are just a result of something. You know, so someone uh, giving you criticism can be constructive, constructive criticism to make your work better in order to make the body flow. And husbands and wives, I'm still working. <laughs> Uh, one of the first things I know is uh, verse 3. It says, But fornication and all uncleanness or covetedness, let it not be once named among you as becoming saints. <clears throat> um, that just made me think that it shouldn't even be said once of you as you're perfecting yourself, as in we need to always be on guard. Um, again, always making sure I 
I'm in the right place or thinking the right thing, set my affections in the right place. Because um, it shouldn't be even named once among them. Not that I may not fall, but it should be what they classify my character as. Um, and so it's not about us falling, but is that your character now? I know you may lie, but are you a liar? Like, uh, do people know you as a liar? Um, do they know you as this? I, do I know Miss Bernice as this, you know? Um, or is there one says walk in love as in when they do fall, are we there lonely and pick them up? Or am I quick to label somebody? And say, no, that's who, no, that's, it, it just tear people down you know, and start slamming people and instead of um, lovingly lift up somebody. And so it just made me think, one, I need to be on guard because it should be named once among me. You know, but also for me, when somebody else does fall, um, I need to be quick to lovingly help. And so not to be quick to label and to pronounce them, you're sinful, you're this, you're that, you're, you're, you're not worthy, or you're not enough, or you're, whatever, whatever that kind of conversation that we tend to put on people as a, yeah, and so I so, say, you know what, his love um, covers a multitude of sins, and so if his love is in me, you, I'm not saying you continue to sin, but his love that lives through me flows through me, always covers right. and so, and that to me flows into husband and wife, and so even as we see each other, you know, his love in me, since it's the most powerful thing, hopefully is in me. Um, I, whatever going on, we're going to work, walk this thing out together. Um, allow the love that he asked me to help me work, walk into perfection and how to love as a husband, as a wife, and as a wife to her husband. That was the first thing I said. You guys hit the nail on the head. Uh, and I know why the Most High took away what he wanted. And I was saying earlier because I need to say it now. <laughs> so uh, my note for Ephesians chapter 5 is responsibility. And what I was going to comment on was during those feasts, when we're trying to do things for the Most High, we have what's called flare-ups. We have to be on guard against those spirits that try to flare up. Especially when we're in the middle of working. Especially like in Pentecost, you know, we, all the guys we had got together, we prayed in the back right before we got to work because there were some flare-ups that were in the spirit were flaring up and we needed to pray, put those fires out. And you can respond one of two ways. You can go to that person and beat them down, which is not going to help. Mm -hmm. Amen. Or you can take it to the Father and respond in love. Amen. And show them and teach them and lead them and to yeah. assist. I'm, I, I don't get anything done by telling Karen, you need to go over there and do that. That, that doesn't work. She is already doing something. So if I see it, I have to be proactive and go out and do those things. And I have, and, and I have to do it with a loving heart. Because yeah. that's the only way it's going to get done. And it's always going to get done right. So you have that loving heart. Amen. And so Amen. this ordering this structure is to defeat those flare-ups because no longer will we have two members in our congregation arguing over silly stuff i mean it's some of the stuff that we bicker about and it's not much but i want to address it because this is this is us we're responsible now that these flare-ups are no more if we know how this church is supposed to operate, we have to make sure that whoever is underneath our tribe is flowing in that order. Pastors shouldn't have to go in and say, man, why you? We should be able to go and say, hey, they care. And it's just an example. She don't do what I care. Just don't be doing that because you're going to cause disruption here. And, that, and that's our responsibility. I mean, you're the head of your house. You know, you're, I mean, you got kids underneath you. You got your father, your mother that you help take care of. You got your grandfather that you help take care of. It's on you. You got to be the one to say, "Hey, this is the way we are going," and and that, and that responsibility to do it in love, because if the, people have used this over and over again to to uh, take power away from women, but that's not what this scripture is about. It's really more for the man to let them know that. You have to respond in love. 
We cannot use our physical strength or our intimidation. It has to be in love. And we have to show people in love. And, uh, and because, and, and actually, let's go to the end of the chapter, because he, he said, he said, verse 32, he said, this is a great mystery that I speak concerning the church, concerning Christ and the church. But he said, nevertheless, let every one of you particularly so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. He's speaking about Christ and the church. We have to love this church like Christ loves this church. Amen. And mm -hmm. we see something that's out of place, something that out of our love. When we, okay, I, I give you an example. Being late to church. Pastor's been harping on it. And a lot of times it's really not my fault. I'm chilling. I'm, I'm usually already dressed. But the reason why we're late is because I didn't take charge. When I really think about it, I was lazy. I thought, oh, I'm good. I sat there and watched everybody else struggle. When I could have helped, I could have did something. I could have been the catalyst that got my family here on time. So when yeah. the pastor has an issue with lateness, that's our fault. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when, when something ain't, it, it, it's, it's our fault. It, it, it is what it is. And and, and I, I tell I should tell my wife all the time, she's like, man, you work so hard. I said, don't feel sorry because I'm a man. That's what I have to do. Yeah, I said we was going to work in the sun and toil. Mm. <laughs> that shit, it is what it is. You know, if it's 110 degrees, of cookie. Or whatever they say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that, that's, what, that's our responsibility. So that's what I got from chapter six. The love is more important than the wife references. Because if you love her and you're constantly showing her in love and rebuking in love, she gonna get in line eventually. Yeah. Me and Karen been in this 10 years. And people look at us and be like, yeah, y'all, but it has to be love there. And that looks a certain way too. Especially if you gotta rebuke your wife, can't do it in front of everybody. You gotta go inside that baby. In love, you see what I'm saying? And so, you know, love, guys. We have to have love first. Amen. Uh, yes. No, 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 no. That's, that's why I told you the other day. No, no. This is just, it's just a hit. That's why I said, that's why I told you the other day. Take it easy. Just take it easy. Because it gets like that. I was like, really? But I had to take it to cool off. And in love, things happen. And also, it works the same way to the wives. Amen. You know, reverencing your husband is understanding that you cannot beat us upside the head with what you want us to do. That's right. All right. If you got an issue with us, take it to the Father. He will. If, 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 if we are true believers, on the head of your house is a true believer. Trust me, the Most High is going to handle it. Just yeah. like a father rebuked his son, he will do so. So right. if you have an issue with the male and you feel like you don't want to be that woman that has to do those things, take it to the father. Yeah. Karen is a testament to that. A lot of times she didn't have to say anything. I come back and apologize. And if we operate in love and the ladies understand the hierarchy and how this thing flows, we shouldn't have any issues. Amen. Women will have the freedom to lead and to do things that they never thought they could do because they're operating in proper order. The same thing goes for the men. Karen has all the freedom in the world because she understands that I'm here to help her. That's right. and so she allows me to lead. And at half the time, she already got it. So like, Come on here, go, baby, because we've already linked up. There's love already there. And so that's where your freedom comes from. But we have to respect the hierarchy. Just like we go to pastor for our issues and he goes to the father, it's the same way in our households. And it's going to be the same way with Yah, pastor in the tribes. Because he's going to consult with us, we're going to consult with him. And he's, I mean, ultimately it's his decision because he's the head of this congregation. But he's going to look to us for that, for that, that, that backing. Amen. And for us to help implement it. And it works, it flows a certain way. Oh, glory. So, uh, now that we finish the qualities, the duties, and the responsibilities, uh, 
Let's go to Joshua 23. I don't know if we're going to make it through the whole thing. But let's go to Joshua 23 and uh, go back to Joshua. And it's my turn to read again. And uh, we're going to continue to plow forward. Everybody get something good out of this? Amen. 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 Joshua 23. Okay, so 23 is called, in my book, A Reminder from History. So I really like that. Uh, the chapter 23 says, And it came to pass a long time after that that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. And Joshua called for all Israel and for their elders and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. And ye have seen all that the Lord your God has done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Amen. Behold, I have divided unto you a unto you thy lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes from Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off even unto the great sea westward and the Lord your God he shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your sight and ye shall possess their land as the Lord your God hath promised unto you be ye therefore very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses that ye turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that ye may come not among these nations, that these that these that remain, no, I'm sorry, verse 7, that ye come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their God, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them nor bow yourselves to them, but cleave to the Lord your God, as he has done unto you this day. For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong, but as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you until this day. And that is a tip. That is true. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your God, he, he it is that fighteth for you, and he hath promised you. Take good heed therefore unto yourselves that ye love the Lord your God, else if ye do in any wise go back and cleave unto the remnant of these nations, even these that remain among you and shall make marriages with them and go unto them they and, and they to you. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, but they shall be snares and traps unto you and scourge you and score and scourges in your sides and thorns in your eyes until ye perish from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And behold, and behold, this day I am going the way of the earth, and ye shall know in your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing hath failed of all the good things which the Lord your God hath spake concerning you. All are coming to pass unto you, and not one thing hath failed thereof. Therefore it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God hath promised you, promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he hath destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God hath given you. And when ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God which he commanded you, and hath gone and served other gods and bowed yourselves to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he hath given you. Amen. We are, well, I'm going to tell you what I saw last week. We went to God's kingdom restoration and Yah made me sit down. Uh, he was gracious and merciful unto me because he knows how I am. So he allowed me and Ron to perform here at the church. Because when I went to God's kingdom restoration, I was jealous. I was pricked in my heart. And that's because I understood what I was supposed to do and I hadn't done it yet. And to see that go forth and to be on the sideline was hurtful. But it just gave me the fuel that I needed to complete the mission that is set before us. That's right. 
and we are getting ready to go into ministry. Whatever that looks like, may the most high lead us. That's right, amen. But we must be sure that when we go out, because the pastor's son at God's King Restoration, he said something that's it's stirring up my soul. He said, first you have to conquer yourself. Yeah. Then, once you conquer yourself, you go out and you preach to others and you conquer and reclaim territory that the enemy has taken. Yeah. Right. And we have to be sure that when we go out and we reclaim this territory, that we do not compromise. We must, we must know what we know, stand on this word, and not mingle at all. Even if it's a familiarity, because it's going to happen. We're going to go into these churches and they're going to be like, well, you know, we can do it. No, we know what the word says. And there is a line being drawn in the sand. And trust me, when it hits the fan, there is no lukewarmness. There is no well, we compromise. There is no compromises. The word speaks for itself. I mean, and, and I think I thank Yah that He did not allow me to write a sermon so that He could say what He needed to say. So that it's not my words. We are not, if we go into these churches and we talk to these people that pastor has talked to before and they allow us in and they allow us to, to show them the scriptures and reason with them, we have to be held bent on throwing out the Christmas trees, everything, drawing a line in the sand and being willing to go to war for it too. It's going to get serious. We're going to take this to the streets and it's, it's, it's going to be hectic out there. And I think about when the children of Israel came out of Egypt. They didn't come out in their tribes. They didn't come out in their tribes. They came out in their armies. And so we are setting up the captains and getting everybody in line so that we go out to the streets. We know how to not only lead, but to take charge, give command, and for things to happen and to flow. And we're going to need that type of dedication and um, continuity if we're going to guard against the outsides. If we think our own therapists are bad, just imagine how it's going to be when we get other people, people who don't believe what we believe, people who, who, who Catholics and Baptists and all these other people that got all these different doctrines other than what the word says. If we think our flare-ups are bad, you know, I, I, told, I told Carrie, you know, uh, we, we have our tour courses, and uh, sometimes we deal with personal things in each other's lives, including the people who participate. And we can't fix those people. <laughs> All you can do is just practice what the Most High has given you, and that's responding in book, chapter, verse, fasting and praying. Book, chapter, verse, fasting and praying. And with this order, with us eliminating these flare ups, we're going to be able to better deal with the flare ups of the world. Because it's, it's a battle. But the battle is not flesh and blood. Yeah, it's through spirits and principalities. So that's why we have to stay in this word. We have to stay prayed up. We have to stay fasted up. Yeah. And so Joshua is charging us to cleave to the Torah. Not to pastor. Not to the house of study. Not to Galveston County. But to the word of Yah. Because he is one that he'll keep us one. Even if we spread out, we're still one. Because we're Israel. And when one sins, it's on the whole congregation. And that's why we have to be willing to stand up and say something to these people. Because to be honest with you, I don't like affliction. So I'm not going to sit there and go and be afflicted because you want to act true. I mean, that's just, that's fair. So that's what I got from verse, from chapter 23. Um, what I got from chapter 23, uh, going back to God's kingdom and restoration, it was an awesome experience for me. And I'm sitting there and I, I, I felt some kind of way uh, myself. And I asked you, I'm like, why do you have me sitting here? You know, like, what's the purpose of this experience? And he, he told me straight up, if you would have did what I told you to do, you would have been up there. Now, being up there wasn't just, you know, it wasn't my concern. It wasn't the thought, but he, he knows that he, 
he knows what he's showing us, and I know what he told me a long time ago. So he, he just basically told me, like, look, if you would have did what I said, you know, you would have been up there. Because he, he has a message uh, that he wants to be brought uh, from all of us. And, you know, what that even looks like for myself, I have no idea, but it's up to me to uh, get in line with what he says and, and trust in him. Uh, the pastor son, he did say, uh, you know, about conquering ourselves. And as soon as he said that, I thought about <clears throat> when God said he did not drive all the ites out of the land, lest the people, you know, learn you know, learn not to do war. So I think about myself and all these battles that I'm going through, you know, and I ask y'all, why am I dealing with this? Why am I dealing with, why am I dealing with this? And, you know, he's showing me that I have to deal with something because if everything would just be too easy, hunky dory, taking ice cream every day, I wouldn't know how to fight. When Brother George came to us that night at Pentecost, I wouldn't know how to fight. And I think about us as a community, as a whole, as a body, the reason why we deal with the issues, the little bitty issues that we, we deal with on the piece, the reason why we have, you know, the, 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 the little fires at our Bible study is so that we know how to fight. I, I honestly think we need this. You know, it's not the little things we, we do. It's not it's not nothing that's you know gonna cause the inferno to burn the place down. But it is something that we can be put on notice to be like, hey, that's not right. You know, we're gonna deal with this issue, even if we have to. We're gonna fight for this issue, and that's gonna give us uh, uh, physical strength and spiritual strength. Amen. Amen. So, yeah, I was going to say in verse 6 it says be, be you or be ye there, be ye therefore very courageous and so uh, that just makes me think that we all need to have courage to do it because it's not easy to do what we do as men as women um, we're always be put in a compromising situation or we're always are put in a situation where we can do the other thing, but doing with the word of God is it does take courage. I mean, to be the right mother, to be the right father, to be the right husband, to be the right wife, it takes courage because our flesh wants us to do something else. Uh, even as what Mike said, uh, let me just sit back and let them, if they're struggling, they're struggling. We're late because of y'all. When, when he said no, it was, we we're late because of me. And so we have to be courageous to do what we need to do as leaders because we all lead in something. As men and women, whether it's um, our grandkids, our kids, or uh, each other, but we, we're leaders in some way, but we need to be courageous. And, and yes, we do need to know how to fight. And so, as in, if you don't have trouble, someone's going to pray. Yeah. Yeah. Someone's going to go to the Father. Yeah. And we give our, our, when everything is good, we just give our quick thank you and move on. Because then, even in Christ, when He said, Didn't I care a ten of you? And only one of you came back. So let us know that we're quick to just to passionately say thank you, but not even return to say to be seriously thankful for what we have. And so sometimes we have to go. He said, Well, I'm allowed to keep going for this because you still haven't learned it. Oh, come on. I mean, when, when are you going to learn? How long is it going to take for you to see that I am the one who is able? When, how long is it going to come for you to seriously say, I need you? Or uh, I'm a fight um, on my knees because it says before um, I'm the one that fought these people. I know y'all had a sword, but if I didn't do it, they say what one to a thousand? Yeah. You think that was you? <laughs> you think you, you beat those thousand? I did. That's right. He did. It. And so uh, we need to struggle, and, and we will be able to fight a thousand. This one does. But how long is it going to take for us to say, I surrender all, every, this attitude, this, this, how I'm supposed to be as a husband, I surrender all. So, but it takes courage. And that's why he charged him. 
to be ye courageous to keep to do all that is written in the book. Okay, so for the sake of time, we're going to read the last two chapters continually. But before I do, these last two chapters are for the whole church. The first part of this message was for us three because we're accountable now. We've set up here through the first four chapters, and we've already declared to our family, but I brought my sign because this is the sign I hang it to my house. But as for this house, with us leading, with Pastor being the head, we will follow Jehovah and whatever his word says. And so that's what this is all about. This is about us taking charge, us getting in line so that we can move better and flow better. And I know what I missed. It was uh, it was back in Exodus at the very beginning. It was when uh, Jethro was talking to Moses. And he said, you're going to weary yourself if you do this all yourself. So he had to appoint captains over hundreds and over fifties and over thousands. And that's what we're doing now. We're appointing captains over fifties, over hundreds, over thousands. The thousands haven't came yet. Right now we're in the, we're in the tens. But we got to start small and work it out in love. And so the last two chapters are a warning to the church. And one thing that it's, it's said in, in these two chapters, it says, those who have an ear to hear, let them hear. Those who have eyes to, it doesn't say about the eyes to see, but we have eyes to see, see. Because we are the Latter-day churches. We're the ones that are going to experience the persecutions to come. Not those big mega churches, trust me, they, they, they're not going to they going to die, and that's the chaff. But us, who truly is seeking God's face, this is who he's speaking to. And we are going to lead, help pastor lead this so that it can be done. So let's be attentive to chapters 2 and chapter 3 of Revelation. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's, those messages spoke to me because those things I do believe are going to come to pass shortly. And those who have an ear to hear, let them hear. So uh, it doesn't, uh, I had, I had one, one first, and then you closing out in chapter three, Brother Marcel. Read two, read three. Okay. Revelations two. <clears throat> Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, write these things, said he, that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, and hast found them liars, and has born and has patience and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from thence thou art falling and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But thou hast that thou hast is the deeds of the Nicolaitans, Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach said unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of Elohim. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna, write these things, said the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. 
Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Ruach said unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write these things, said he, which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seat is, and thou holdest fast my name and hast not denied my faith. Even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. So has also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, thank you, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Ruach said unto the churches, to him that overcometh, I will give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give them a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saying he that received it. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira, <laughs> for real, <laughs> Thyatira, write these things, said the son of Elohim, who had his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works and charity and service and faith and thy patience and thy works and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee because thou suffered that woman Jezebel who called herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden, but that which you have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with the rod of iron as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I receive, receive of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Ruach saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of Sardis, write, these things, these things said he that hath the seven spirits of Yah and seven stars, I know thy works, 
that thou hast a name that uh, livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before your hope. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hope fast and repent. If therefore thou hast not watched, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that I will come, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. And he that has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach has said unto the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things which he that is holy, he that is true, he that has the key of David, and he that opens, and no man shuts, and shuts, and no man opens. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man shall shut it. For thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved you. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, and I also will keep thy from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, and to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly, and hold that fast which hath haste, and no man take thy crown. Him that will come, will I make a pillar in the temple of Yah, and he shall, and he shall go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of Yah, and the name of the city of my God which is New Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. And he that has an ear, let him hear what the Ruach has said unto the churches. And to the church, and to the angel of the church of life,